Hi, welcome back. I bet, I bet if you didn't read, I bet you can't guess what we're talking about today. I bet you think it's Doctor Who. But let me tell you something, there's a lot more people out there who could talk a lot more about David Tennant than me. Don't let the glasses fool you. These are originals from when Freddy's Dead was in the theaters, which I'm going to take off now because they do make things hard to see. But that is right. Today, we are going to be talking about Fred the Man Kruger. This guy was such a huge, huge part of me growing up. Look, not only do we have the, can you see that? The Freddy's Dead official 3D glasses. We've got the Freddy's collector card set in the boiler box. The collector's card set is all here, including the awesome hologram cards. Can you see that? It also came with a t-shirt, but I wore the t-shirt so much that you can see through it, so you're not going to get to see the t-shirt, but you do get the awesome sweater. There has been trivia games, Boom. And he has graced the cover of so many magazines. This guy was a childhood hero. I wish, oh, I used to record, they do little specials on cable back in the day, like on HBO, I think it was. They'd call, like, Freddy Speaks and stuff like that. Sorry. Ah! Anyways, every time that there would be a new movie come out, they'd do like a little special, like a behind the scenes. They would talk to Robert England, who is the absolute genius that brought this character to life. This guy, I mean, I know it's probably not politically correct to say he killed with so much style and so much pizzazz that you couldn't help but love him. Okay, maybe some people could help but love him, but not me. Because, see, I didn't know him as Freddy Krueger originally. Originally, I knew him as the character Willie from the original V series. And in that... He was a sweet, wonderful, kind, loving, vegetarian, lizard person thing. But I absolutely adored the character. And I adored him. He was adorable. And um, then he went on to play Freddy. So I walked into this thinking... You know, yeah, he looks like that, but that's still Willie underneath all that. And I just absolutely love this actor. He's been in, God, how many movies? Eight movies? I mean, eight of his own movies. Where are they? Let's see, we got the eight film collection here. He's been in Freddy vs. What? Freddy versus Jason. Sorry, I played with the light too much. Uh, he used to have, there was, oh, whoo! Sorry, I get a little overexcited. There was the TV show, Freddy's Nightmares. That was just awesome because he was, unlike the Friday the 13th series, he was actually the antagonist in it. It was Nightmare on Elm Street related stuff. And um, so I found this video um, and I wanted to share it with you, and I wanted to also share my love of Fred Krueger in the process. And look, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just state this now. Fred Krueger, played by Robert England. That reboot that they did, don't ask me about it. Don't get me talking about it, because one, my blood pressure is in a good range now. And... I don't want to go on an hour and a half rant about what they did to Freddy in that movie. Granted, the man who played him 
did a lovely job. He made a lovely Freddy. However, the rest of that garbage fire is not going to be discussed. Um, oh, yeah, you can also see Robert England in D. Snyder's Strangeland. And, oh, my God, what's the one where he had the gator farm? What's the one where he had the gator farm? It was before V, I think. I think it was like in the late 70s. Eaten Alive. I think he was in Eaten Alive. I think that was the name of it. Anyways, this guy is a great actor. I am always so happy and so thrilled when I see him in anything. It doesn't have to be Freddy. It just has to be him. He makes me happy. So, all right. I'm excited. Let's watch the video. Decades after Freddy Krueger's chilling debut as one of horror's most notorious monsters, Robert England still credits his time as the character for taking his career to new heights. However, taking on the role of Freddy Krueger also completely changed the actor's life. Oh, Robert England never, never set out with the that. intention of playing a monster like Freddy Krueger. In he fact, did his so earliest good. work was in theater, and from there, he found himself playing sidekicks in supporting roles. He also played some unsavory characters in films like Eaten Alive yes! and appeared in controversial movies like Dead and Buried. But playing Freddy was an entirely new experience. England told Hollywood Chicago, I had gotten typed early in Hollywood as a southerner, then it was the best friend and sidekick roles. Although playing Freddy was a big step up from his previous parts, England has said that the reason he got the role was simply because of typecasting. He had experience really? working in the horror genre, and this time, he just got to play the main villain instead of a side character. This is it, Jennifer. Your big break in TV. But England isn't resentful of the fact that he was typecast. As he explained, I didn't choose to be in horror movies. I just like to go where I'm wanted. And One believe of the me, perks of we playing love you. An iconic monster like Freddy Krueger, England may not be winning Oscars or raking in the biggest salaries in Hollywood, but even though he's in his early 70s, he never finds himself wanting for work, and he has plenty of freedom to choose the projects he wants. England acknowledges that if he'd never gotten the opportunity to play Freddy, he probably wouldn't be enjoying the same level of success today. He's been That's consistently working in Hollywood since landing a supporting role in the 1974 film Buster and Billy. But after playing Freddy, the office oh, yeah, started that. flooding in. As a result, <laughs> that was controversial. he's acted in movies like The Phantom of the Opera. Oh god, yeah, I remember mask, that. That was such a good role. Leslie Vernon, TV shows like Bones I and Supernatural. That. And in 2020, yeah. he hosted a show on the Travel Channel called True Terror. The role Ooh, have literally to look that one up. opened a whole new world for the actor. He told Looper, I started working abroad. I've done about a dozen movies in Europe. I've done movies in Africa and Russia. I've done movies in South America and Mexico. Lots of movies in Canada. And that is the greatest gift that was given to me by the success of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. England also attends conventions around the world. He told Den of Geek, that makes me I don't happy. think I'd have this longevity without the genre. I can't I'm really believe glad I'm that still he here. Get it keeps stuck. changing and growing, and In, uh, I feel like I'm on cruise control now. I can go where I want. Typecasting thing. Robert England had been a working actor for years before playing Freddy, but after Elm Street came out, his life seemed to change overnight. And there's always fans around now. I mean, the crew are bringing their kids in and stuff. So. I'm kind of on a little bit. Suddenly, audiences all over the world knew his name, and the film made a huge cultural impact. England told Hollywood Chicago, The Freddy phenomenon was international. I had no control over it. I realized it's best to surrender and enjoy it, because you can't fight it. For the first time, he was experiencing what it was really like to be an international star. Not just an <laughs> I like him a few the films crowd. <laughs> and TV shows under his belt. It was a whole new level of fame, but he simply embraced the changes and didn't allow it to overwhelm him. In fact, England enjoys the attention, especially when it comes to seeing his name appear in different languages around the world. He told me, oh, I really awesome. like foreign posters, especially the ones where my name is written in Russian or Chinese. 
Chinese. I think that's cool. And some of them are just amazing. There's one from Thailand, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors with the Freddy Snake. It's a strange, oh, wow. creepy poster, but it's an image of me swallowing an Oscar-winning actress. So I had to have it. Heck yeah. Cruise with <laughs> Norwegian and enjoy. How dare Free they put commercials in. But Robert England always knew that what he wanted to do for the rest of his life was theatre. After attending a professional acting school and working in regional theatre, he started to get opportunities in film, but he still valued everything he'd learned acting in plays. And when he got the role of Freddy, he was finally able to put those skills to good use again. There was so much he could express about Freddy's character through body language, and his theatre skills gave him a leg up. He told Looper, I learned back in my theatre days that villains are better written. They're more complex, there are more layers, and it's fun to do it. When I Villains finally got fun. all that makeup on Sometimes. and found the voice and found the moves, I realized I didn't have to worry about what Robert England looked like. It's traveling time! <laughs> Fear seems to be an international language. England realized just how well the narratives in films like Elm Street could translate across cultures when he saw the worldwide response to the film. There are certain primal terrors that affect all of us, no matter where we're from, and Elm Street played on those emotions. The thought of someone attacking you in your sleep when you're most vulnerable and totally defenseless is an ancient fear, one that we've lived with since humanity's caveman this scene days. Here, I love England this scene. told Movie Hole, these movies have traveled so well, you don't really need subtitles with them, because they're not that culturally specific. Everyone has this great primal basic hook, which is the nightmare, the bad dream, so people can identify with these films. Following Elm Street's success, England accepted more offers to work on films shot abroad, where he was able to indulge his love of travel and history. The actor has worked on movies shot everywhere from Italy to Israel, and he's always been very grateful that playing Freddy opened up those doors for him. In fact, he says that nowadays, he often prefers working abroad. He told IGN, I would never have been able to go down into the caves in the Dordogne region and see the original Neanderthal graffiti. I would never have been invited to Lake Balaton in Czechoslovakia. I never would have spent six weeks putting my makeup on in the same room that Rasputin was shot in. These are all the things that happened That's because I'm Freddy Krueger, pure and simple. Although England is certainly best known for his work in horror films, he also enjoys comedy. Unfortunately, the fact that his name and face were so strongly associated with Freddy Krueger in the 80s and 90s meant that comedy directors weren't exactly knocking on his door the and Freddy asking was hilarious. to work with him. Audiences knew him as a villain, not a comedian, but a and fun England villain. knows that he missed out on some roles because like the of the Joker. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't. I kept scaring you, but I work on commission. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he's come to accept that it was all for the best. England admitted to IGN, I think in the middle 80s, there were a couple of gigs in comedy, both as an actor and director, that I lost because I was so, so connected with Freddy Krueger. I wish it hadn't happened. However, he has no regrets about pursuing work in the horror genre he and sacrificing some comedic evil, roles he? because of that decision. After all, that no had Stephen Jeffries really in it, who all. played and in Evil the Ed run, in his career Fright decisions Night. have clearly worked out in his favor. If you ever found yourself lying awake at night after watching Elm Street, Stress. afraid to close your eyes because Freddy Krueger just might show up in your dreams, you're in good company. Elm Street has resulted in plenty of sleepless nights for audiences over the years, as well as a few cast members. In fact, England himself admits that he's had nightmares in which he's Freddy. Wait a second. Oh, Let me see, get this that's straight. sad. You're having nightmares about Freddy? 
I loved movie. New well, Nightmare because you actually got to film, see Baldwin him. Spent hours and hours wearing he the heavy makeup that created Freddy's frightening look. He and got if you used to see himself looking monstrous, but every once in a while, he would catch a the, glimpse the of himself in a mirror at through. the end of a long day and feel disoriented and confused by his ruling. own reflection. And that feeling has haunted him for years. England told This Bird's Day, Occasionally, I do have a nightmare. I dream of me sitting up and I'm looking in the mirror. And it's not me, it's Freddy in the mirror. So yeah, that's how you know a slasher villain is truly terrifying. When the guy behind the mask is having bad dreams. At this point, you could definitely consider Robert England to be an expert on horror films in general. The genre is certainly in the midst of a modern resurgence, and England says that after so many years of playing creepy characters, he's developed an eye for which films will be successful and which ones will flop. So what qualities can really make or break a horror movie? So According like to England, scream, it all depends on whether or not the film offers something genuinely unique. He told Flavorwire, if something is good or original, it does eventually get discovered. It can take a while, but it will rise to the surface. And Heck as yeah. you might expect, England is glad that horror is finally oh, I getting can't watch the this recognition I haven't seen the new and one respect yet. that I've he's just always the believed one. the genre deserves. Back in the 1980s, okay. he found himself defending horror films for their artistic merit because they weren't taken as seriously. And now the and genre is a whole new the shows. Specials too, For and England, it really did. He gave me best a parts of playing Freddy is the deeper fact that younger generations still horror. love the Elm Street films. Although it's been decades since the original movie was released, Freddy still scares new audiences today. Dad, you've got to see this movie. It's totally terrifying. That's because it's based on a true story. Wait, what? Freddy's coming for you. You can sleep when <laughs> oh, you're that dead. was a great England episode of the Goldbergs. He was on there playing the Freddy. First film with its long-standing appeal, and that dude Although there is the voice. Of, um, the of Roger Rabbit certainly didn't hurt either. With several Elm Street films coming out in the years since the original, including the Friday the 13th crossover, Freddy vs. Jason, fans had a whole lot of new material to look forward to. England told Nerd Bastards, A Nightmare on Elm Street came of age at the same time as MTV, yep. Early Cable, and then VHS Generation, and the DVD Generation, and then Blu-ray and Netflix. So I'm probably on my third generation of fans by now. <laughs> the actor said that the digitally remastered versions of the films represented a significant improvement in quality, adding, the movies look better now than when they did when they came out. So that there's effect a great was done by Screaming Mad George. Oh God, the cockroach was, the here. Transformers. I think it was Screaming Mad George but did that one. England talked to Looper there about so what he's learned over the years as far as what the character shows. means to fans, saying, I've met thousands of fans whose memory of Nightmare on Elm Street is not as a horrible, violent film. They have great, fond memories of watching it with their mums and dads and brothers and sisters. They have these memories of a family experience. Can Robert England ever really say goodbye to Freddy Krueger? As of right now, his answer is a definite, maybe. In 2018, England appeared on the Halloween episode of the sitcom The Goldbergs as Freddy. It was the first time that he'd played the character since appearing in Freddy vs. Jason in 2003. But as far as returning to the role that for another movie, that episode was actually in the future, why I started he's watching not The Goldbergs. Sure he can commit to it. I'm gonna need a new actor to play Freddy because they're gonna have to do eight of them. You know, maybe it's and Freddy's son. I might have one left in me, but at this point, it would be pretty unrealistic to expect well, England Freddy had a to daughter, sign on to play so. Freddy in eight more. Films. Films. Actor Jackie Earl Haley took on the role for one film in a 2010 reboot. But since this is the role that means more to England than any other, there's a good chance that we'll see him on screen and in our nightmares as Freddy once more. Check out one I'm of our newest videos about right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite star. I was really worried that it was going to come out, that it had affected him badly. And I'm so happy that it didn't. Um, because it really is. It's a beloved role. And I'm so glad that it opened so many doors for him. And, um, you know, so many people, they'll, they'll play a role like that. And then they get typecast. And that's all they want them to play. And they're like, no, you can't 
play anything else. You're this guy. Like, um, George Reeves, the original Superman, he couldn't do anything else because everybody just saw him as Superman. And I'm so, so happy and just, I'm, it, it warms my heart to know that he's had such a good career and being Freddy Krueger has opened so many doors for him. And, um, there was something else I was going to bring up, and I can't remember what it was. And I know that after I stop, I'm going to totally remember. But um, I love Robert England. I love Fred Krueger. I uh, he he's my favorite slasher. Some folks like Jason. Some like Michael Myers. No, it's all about Freddy because he's got the personality to back it up. <laughs> so. Um, If I remember what it was that I forgot, then I guess I'll just splice that in. I hope y'all have a great day. I hope y'all learned something. I hope that y'all have a deeper appreciation for the actor that plays the role. And um, if you've never seen the original V series, you really should check it out. Um, I don't know if anybody thought there were lizard-human hybrids before that, but... Those were the first ones I saw. But I hope that y'all have a great day. I hope that you enjoyed this video. This one, this one definitely, give this one, let me know. Um, because I can do a whole rant on Brad Dourif and his uh, Oscar loss in 1976. So, if you like this, if you want to hear me rant about Brad Dourif not getting an Oscar, um... I understand, you know, horror films don't get nominated very much for that. So, if they had, I would expect him to have an entire wall full of them. Did they not have People's Choice Awards in the 80s? I guess, did they? I don't know. If they didn't put it in Fangoria or Gorezone, I probably would have never known. But, y'all have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you come back for more. Love y'all. Bye.